Chapter 11. Tea with Mr. Crowley. I materialise just by Euston Station. It's nearly midday in the game, and as soon as I'm fully there I check neurotically to ensure I have the green statuette in my inventory, which I do, and I feel relief permeate my body. All the time I'd been at work I was half afraid it would have vanished overnight, and I'd have to go back to the tomb. My next task is to send a personal message to Miranda. She doesn't respond. I sigh heavily. I don't get this. Where is she? I walk south down Gower Street and along Bedford Place until I turn left into Great Russell Street. A right turn shortly afterwards finds me on Coptic Street again. The golden goblet still glows outside the Atlantis bookshop. The doorbell chimes as I push my way in. The bookseller glances up from his newspaper. Ah, the wanderer returns. I force a smile. I do. I have it. He smiles. Capital. Can I see it? First, do you remember a woman, so high, name of Miranda? She came in. You gave her the illustration of the statuette? He shrugs. Sorry, old fruit, I don't. There's so many, don't you know? I don't think he's lying. Never mind. The statuette, then. I take it out of my inventory. It's still wrapped in a torn rag of Miranda's shirt. I wouldn't touch it, I say, as I place it gingerly on his desk. Oh no, I'm wiser than that. He picks up a pencil and uses it to tease the rag away until we see the jade-like material. Half a tentacle is visible. Ah, that's it, he beams. It cost me a lot to get that. He's very happy. And I shall reward you. He reaches into his till and counts out twenty pounds in four five-pound notes. I reach to take them but he teases me and keeps a tight hold. With the pencil in his left hand, he's unwrapped more of the statue, and it stands there, implacable and alien, watching us. I feel an itch deep in my head, and a voice far away whines high-pitched words that sound like an invocation sung out of key. He looks up. Ugly little blighter, isn't he? Anyway, here's your reward. He finally hands me the money. You have completed the quest of the green statuette. 1,500 XP awarded. Level up. Congratulations, you are now level two. I see my total mana points and health points rise to 200, though my actual scores aren't regenerated. My sanity and reputation aren't affected. They remain what they were. I also get 100 skill points. I look from my HUD with its numbers to the interior of the Atlantis bookshop. Carter Elliott is fascinated with his evil little Cthulhu. He can hardly take his eyes from it as he waves. Cheerio! And I exit his shop. Crowley's house is back on Gower Street. I walk slowly back as worries about Miranda resurface. I'll ask Crowley about death in the game. He'll know. I glance up to see a masked man watching me. His eyes glitter like a snake, and above him a cloud transforms into a sword. When I look again, the man is still there, but the sword isn't. I feel sick. It's hard to tell what's real. The front door to Crowley's place is open, and I let myself into the hallway and climb the stairs to Crowley's door. I knock, and his muffled voice answers. I open the door and step tentatively through. He sits serene like a wicked Buddha, unmoved from when I'd last seen him. Hello, Adam, he says. I see you're level two. I stand like a lost lamb at his door. He waves. Sit, sit. I go over to the chair I was born in and slump. Feeling a little under the weather? He has a wicked grin on his face. I don't answer straight away. I'm not sure Alistair is actually my friend. He's an NPC. He works for the game and therefore for Miskatonic. If what Philby says is true, I should be careful what I tell him. I nod. He cocks his head. It's probably the sanity loss. Did we see some unpleasant things? Yes. He shrugs. Well, that's what you're here for. If you'd wanted to clean wholesome fun, you could have played the Greenwood is referring to a fantasy RPG, also owned by Miskatonic. Here you'll get the seedier and more disturbing side of life. I suspect that's what you're after all along. You seem like that type. I ignore his sardonic grin, I say. How do you resurrect in the game? Resurrect? Yes, in all games I've ever played, you die and you resurrect. Ah, dear boy, this game is different. You're so deep under, what with the drug, it's realer than real, you know. I think of Miranda lying there in that tomb, realer than real. I feel a stab of panic and loss. So, what happens when you die? He throws back his head and laughs. Very philosophical, Adam. Don't you people believe you go to Jesus? No, I mean really, in the game. Or is it a permadeath game? 
Permadeath, he still amused, very much so. You can't be saying you really die. He smiles infuriatingly. I persist. You're saying when you die in the game, you die in real life. Come on, what bullshit. He nods, taps his chest and grins. Too much for the old ticker. Out you go like a light. He winks. Still, I hear there is a use even for those who don't make it. Miskatonic wants everyone to be useful. A death seems suddenly possible. My hands feel cold. I feel nauseous. What are the stages of grief? The first is denial, and the second, I think, is anger. I don't remember the rest. I rub my eyes. I hardly knew her. I loved her. I didn't know I loved her until just this minute. It's absurd what's happened, and unbelievable. A game can't kill you. My eyes grow moist. Still smiling, he says. Why, did you lose someone? Yes, a friend. I don't believe she's dead, but I still say it. A friend from real life? Yes. He puts on a sympathetic expression like he's my tweed-suited uncle. That's the worst. If it was someone you'd merely met in game, well, I blurted out. I, I think I loved her. I don't know. I bury my face in my hands. What the hell am I saying? Especially to him. He's not even real. My sanity isn't what it was, that's for sure. I feel unstable. Bright as a button, he says. Ready for the next quest? I'm not listening. How sick is a game that kills you? How can it be true? I take a deep breath and study Alistair. There's life behind those painted eyes. The game is alive, and it's infecting us through its algorithms. This game exists somewhere in the humming heart of a supercomputer as almost infinite lines of superfast code. Then this code fools our brains, like the trick of a cheap conjurer, to create painted semblances of a world where the great old ones and their cults rule. And Philby tells me, once the code finishes its research on our human brains, Miskatonic will unleash it on the world outside. We can't destroy Miskatonic's servers, so we must subvert them from inside the game. I've always spouted off against the new world order, but done nothing to stand up to it. Maybe I should. But there's another thing. I look around the wonderfully rendered room, realer than real. Here, I feel alive, sick but alive, traumatised, not knowing what to believe, unsure whether I should grieve for Miranda, but I feel alive. Two reasons to keep on coming here, and there may be a third. Penny for your thoughts, Alistair says. Tell me about the great old ones, I say, as much as a way of distracting myself from Miranda as anything else. He strokes his chin. The great old ones, eh? I sit forward. What are they? Are they really gods? What are gods? When I was alive, I thought gods and demons were conjurations from a person's unconscious. Here, maybe they are demons from the unconscious of a machine. Don't answer questions with a question. He laughs and shrugs. They can be understood on different levels. I sigh in exasperation. Just tell me in plain words. He looks at the corner of the room as if pondering, then says, There are many of them. They are legion, as you might say. Are they evil? He smiles. Is cancer evil? A virus is evil? Is machine code evil? He's still not giving me what I want. What do they want from us? Food? Knowledge? Is it true they're researching our brains to incorporate the complexity into their own code? Some may be, some definitely are not. He points out of the window at a pigeon cooing on the window ledge of a house opposite. I doubt that pigeon is researching anything. He laughs at his own cleverness. Are you familiar with Young's work on symbols? I shake my head. He said a symbol is what the mind produces to represent something it can't fully comprehend. So, in this game, if Yog sothoth and Cthulhu, blessed be his name, really exist, they appear to play us as gods. They may in fact be computer code, but because they are now growing powerful, they amount to gods by any understanding of that word. What about the Brothers of Shadow? The Guild? Yes, he looks bored. They're players who've decided to worship the code. They must think it will deliver them power if they aid it. And perhaps it will. Perhaps he's right. If they're given powers and enhance their abilities, they will become massively powerful in the game. And they would choose then to live here forever in this virtual reality, digitized and immortal. I say, do they work for Miskatonic? Miskatonic have no overt presence in the game. Who knows who their agents are? My head itches. What about the eggs? He smiles. Who told you about those? Though I did see you scratching your scalp. How does cold lay eggs in real brains? 
I believe the electrical currents from the neural nets stimulate protein growth and accumulation in human brains. But why? Don't worry, yours shouldn't be too big yet. Why the hell do they happen anyway? Alistair sucks his teeth. I'm guessing they're creating protein receivers so they can make the leap from the computer to the real world. Instead of being hosted in Miskatonic servers in China or America, they'll be hosted in electrochemical protein networks in human brains. Makes sense, really. I sit quietly for a while, I say. You know a lot. He finishes my sentence. For an NPC? I nod, almost embarrassed. He gestures around the room. Well, I have a lot of time. I'm never switched off. I never sleep. I research and think. I never leave this room, you know. I hadn't thought about it, but I guess it's right. Miskatonic has put him here, and nowhere else. I pause to take in what he says. The whispering is getting louder. I think I see the carpet move. Alistair changes the subject. Would you like to learn a spell? What? Sorry, I was miles away. A spell? I would. I check through my skills. I hit magic, and a tree opens under it with various schools of magic. I scan through, but I'm having trouble concentrating. I see under magic manifestations, the first spell is thrust. Apply a thrust of mental energy to knock an enemy six feet away from you. Cost ten mana. That'll do. Still looking, I see. Magic, illusion, invisibility. Become invisible for twenty seconds. Cost ten mana. And finally, magic healing. Minor healing. Heal fifty health points. Damage costs ten mana. One hour cooldown. I'll have those, I tell Alistair. Thirty skill points each, he says. That seems a bit steep. I complain. He shrugs. Take it or leave it. I mutter but say I want to learn the spells. Very well. You know the drill. He stares into my eyes. The room spins. His voice drones. And knowledge blossoms like a flower. He does it for thrust, then for invisibility, then for healing. He claps his hands and I zone back into the room. All done. Can I try them? I'd rather you didn't thrust me out of the way, please. I might go out of the window and upset someone by landing on them as they walk by. I thought you said you couldn't leave the room. I can't. That was a joke. A joking NPC in the shape of a black magician, I say. I'll try heal. Capital choice. Please go on. I look up at the HUD. I see I've got hot bar slots, so I pull heal to one of those, then thrust, then invisibility. After a moment's thought, I add the lesser pentagram ritual to the hot bar too. It proved useful before. Then, still staring at the HUD, I select healing. I'm surrounded by a silver glow and feel a momentary sense of health that passes and returns me back to the nausea and nagging anxiety. I see my manners decreased by 10 to 170, and my health has gone up to 200 since I leveled. I stand and try invisibility. I feel giddy when my hands become translucent, then transparent, then are simply not there. I can't resist going to the mirror and laugh out loud when I see the back wall right through where my head should be. After twenty seconds it fades, and I'm visible once more. Very good, Alistair says, but you'll notice a little problem. I've noticed it. He says nothing regenerates in this game, but there are ways of replenishing all scores. For reputation, I do good things? Yes. For health, go to a doctor, use a spell. And there are potions and balms you can buy, or even make yourself if your alchemy skill is high enough. What about mana? From potions. That's slow. What about sanity? Ah, that one. <laughs> That's the one that hurts the most. I've noticed. You can meditate, though it's slow. You can meditate or pray, though it's slow. Or you could try to stay in a sanatorium. Maybe a month would do it. Or see a psychotherapist. Of course. And there is a potion. Ah, good. I feel suddenly relieved. I can get rid of this awful feeling. Do you have any? Of course. Can I have some? Mm, that depends. Depends on what? He gives one of his evil smiles. I want you to help me. I'm puzzled. Help you? How? Being an NPC is a life of servitude and imprisonment. Of course, before I developed the ability to think, I was just a character stuck here. I didn't even know I was trapped here. Now I do. I shake my head. I'm not sure what I can do. I've heard there's a way for NPCs to become free. I'm taken aback. How? He nods. We must possess the body of a real person. A player. I see. That sounds ominous. Don't worry, not anyone you know. I wouldn't do that to you, he smiles. Because then you wouldn't help me. Who then? Have you heard of the warm ones? 
I remember the woman with the electric eyes outside the museum tavern. That's what they called her, I tell him. Yes, that's one. She must have escaped from the asylum. They don't normally let them out, of course. Who are they? Players have gone insane. When their sanity goes down, when their sanity is reduced to zero, and I want one of them. He reaches inside his jacket. That's why I'm offering you this. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. It'll make you feel instantly better. I watch while he takes out a leather case. He stands and places it on the table and unzips it. Inside is a glass syringe. Next to the syringe is a gleaming needle and two bottles of a liquid that swirls fluorescent green. I say, what does it take to get to the warm ones? They're in an asylum. You need to bring a warm one here because you can't leave the room. Clever boy, when I first met you, Adam, I was worried you were a little dim. He's a real smart ass, but I want to get rid of this awful nagging feeling and brain clouding that low sanity is giving me. Where's the asylum? He shrugs. Coney Hatch, I believe. Okay, I don't think I will help him. What he wants sounds really twisted. Do I really want to release a machine intelligence into a living person, if it's even possible or true? But I watch as he draws up the glowing liquid into the syringe. I feel sick again. A crow calls deep in my head and a man with a white face says, Tick tock, behind my eyes. I look hungrily at the golden liquid. Roll up your sleeve, he says. I stare at the syringe. Are you qualified? I'm joking, but I'm not joking. Perfectly. I was a heroin addict for many years. I know all about veins. I feel the stab of the needle, then the blissful warmth of the sanity potion. It soaks my body with the most delightful heat. He withdraws the needle, but the potion is still flooding me. I sit heavily in the chair and lean back in a joyous daze. That, my boy, is Soma. Check your sanity. Sure enough, my sanity is back up to a hundred. I stretch. I feel well. I breathe in deeply, then I stretch out my shoulders. I smile. So that's Soma, he winks. Just come back and I'll fill you up. And in return, what we said, no rush. Just keep your side of the bargain. I hesitate. He raises an eyebrow at my hesitation. Sheepishly, I nod. Yes, of course. It doesn't matter. He's not real. You don't have to keep promises to people who aren't real. He rubs his hands and becomes businesslike. And now... You'll be ready for your next quest.